What's up, everybody? This is Jay here uh, with Fantasy Labs, and I'm joined here with Justin and John to break down this Friday, April 22nd, three-game NBA slate. Although, kind of with the Spurs-Grizzlies, it, it feels more like a two-game slate uh, to really look at, and there might be some hidden value in that late game, but we'll discuss that later. Uh, Justin, John, how's it going, guys? Uh, pretty good. Uh, you know, coming here from Colorado, just here for the week, uh, just chilling, hanging out, um, having a good time. And, um, you know, uh, you know, came in uh, surprise Pete yesterday. It was pretty, uh, pretty fun. Yeah, we're all within uh, 20 minutes of each other for the first time since, I guess, San Diego. So a long week ahead. But for now, we have MLB and NBA and I guess in this case, NBA to talk about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we we can't even hang out because we're all working. But uh, we'll they were at separate locations right now. Like we're in the same city, but we can't even record together because we all have so much stuff to do. We're uh, we're definitely gonna meet up here later to get some some jelly bean wagers on some of these games. So oh, always looking forward to that. But yeah, let's uh let's jump into this slate real quick. Uh, first game we got is the Cavs at Pistons. Uh, Cavs are favored by four, and the total is two hundred even. So pretty solid game for for the East. Eastern Conference uh, injury front. We just got Mo Williams questionable with left knee inflammation, which is pretty irrelevant for for our purposes. So let's kind of start off on the Cavs side. I think a lot of these guys make for pretty strong cash plays, and then we have some tournament value as well. Uh, either of you guys expecting uh, Jr. Swish to rain threes again? <laughs> I don't know about that, but I think you know, given the the slate and how shooting guards is shaping up. I think he's probably one of the uh, better cash options out there. Definitely warrants consideration. Um, the other guys you're looking at, you know, Evan Turner on FanDuel, Marcus Smart on FanDuel, um, Xavier Munford on DK. Uh, but really other than that, um, Turner on DK as well. But other than that, you know, it's kind of thin out the position. Um, I don't like, you know, traditionally attacking the uh, wings of Detroit and especially Going back to Detroit, uh, I think they'll be definitely a little stingier. Um, so I don't think this is a really like a slam dunk spot at all for J.R. Smith. I can definitely see him uh, maybe disappointing and going for like 20, 22 uh, DK points in this one. Um, but uh, even given that, you know, given the weaker alternatives, I think you at least have to give him some consideration here, um, given how much he's been playing, averaging 35 minutes uh, so far. So I uh, like gives him, you know, a decent floor, uh, even if he does underperform. It's like the Kyle Korver slate of last time in which he was rostered by many just because like he had the most upside at the position. Uh, Off-ball guard tonight at FanDuel is once again just a bad spot, and JR is the cheaper option between uh, 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 Contavious Caldwell-Pope as well as uh, Evan Turner. Yeah, it's just – I mean, his minutes, it's, it's just a good option at the in cash games. Yeah, I think given this slate, and it's really difficult to kind of find value overall. I think that kind of propels Jr. up a little bit. I don't really like him uh, very much at all. But again, it is just like that Kyle Korver slate where you kind of are looking at where you can save the most at uh, the least cost, so you're not missing out too much at the shooting guard position. And then I don't think we need to talk too much about uh, the big three here. All playing really well. Kevin Love's been playing a bit more at the five, which I like to see. He's been performing. Uh, great. And then we got obviously LeBron, I think is, is a good anchor to your cash teams tonight on the road. Uh, Kyrie as well. So I think these three you definitely want to look at pretty strongly for cash and then uh, definitely tournaments as well. Yeah. What I like about this, uh, this matchup here is, um, you know, are you worried at all about uh, Stanley Johnson being in LeBron's head? I mean, clearly uh, when Stanley Johnson has guarded LeBron, he's only shot 13 for 15 and gone for 28 points. So uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, I don't know, it's pretty deep in there, uh, apparently. And uh, um, I, I'm excited to see them duel. I'm excited to see uh, what happens. And I think LeBron, um, you know, might have a really big game in this one. And, um, you know, I think you want to be poking the bear here. Uh, we saw what happened when Pat Beverly tried to do that with Steph. I would yeah. say we're going we're gonna to see another stare down for 45 seconds after he dunks on him again. Yeah, John, you know, you could really learn a lesson from this whole Stanley Johnson thing, kind of talking your big game in Mario Kart and really anything else that you've lost to me. And so I think there's a lesson to be learned here. No, because I'm too stubborn for that. I still show up no matter what, especially when I beat you in tennis later this week. It's not going to happen. We, we might have to record that. All right, let's, uh, let's keep it moving. Let's 
touch up on the Pistons side, first home game for them. Uh, this is a close enough spread. Applied at 98 points, playing their starters heavy minutes, which we like to see. Uh, they've all been really consistent. Um, so I think given this slate and kind of canceling out one game just due to the low total and blowout factor a little bit, I think we definitely want to look at a lot of these guys on this team. Where are you kind of starting? Is it going to come down more to maybe positional scarcity and uh, getting a piece of this Pistons team? Yeah, for sure. I think it's just kind of roster construction. I'm, I'm pretty good with all of them across the board. Um, Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond, KCP, and Tobias Harris, I think are pretty safe. And then Marcus Morris is uh, more of kind of a tournament type option for me. Um, you know, he has um, kind of s- some swings in his value from here, from, from, you know, from game to game. But I do like his upside quite a bit in this one. I can definitely see him um, coming through and, and having a big line. He does have, um, you know, big uh, potential for a kind of explosion. You know, I can come out and score nine of the first 12 points for the Pistons, for example. He, you know, has these hot starts all the time. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I definitely think it comes down to, um, you know, putting together these rosters and, and figuring out which one, uh, emerges kind of the best, uh, best value at the position. Yeah. I think I'm starting with Reggie Jackson, no matter what, um, just as minutes are locked in, it's still a good matchup in their, in their backcourt, uh, as opposed to their front court where Andre Drummond, his floor is safe, but, uh, his upside, it's still somewhat limited. Um, so yeah, I like Reggie Jackson to begin with, but this game as a whole is just screams cash. I mean, everyone's basically locked in the rotation already. Yeah. For cash, you know, we're all about floors, especially in this short slate kind of throughout the whole playoffs. A guy who has a high floor, I think is really valuable because the variance is strong, especially when you kind of get into these J.R. Smith-type plays. So I like Pope, I think, more than J.R. I trust his floor a little bit more. But J.R. does offer that salary relief. Uh, and then I agree, Reggie, I think his, at his price point with his increase of minutes in the playoffs, I think is a great play as well. I don't, I don't mind Drummond tournament exposure, but he's probably the guy I'm off of uh, the least, all things considered. I mean, in, in favor of Horford, uh, we're thinking, because that's really the only other uh, cash option at center. Yep. Yeah, and it, and I like Horford a lot. So, yeah, I'd prefer him over Drummond. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I, yeah I would actually say Horford's ceiling might even be higher. Like, Drummond's floor is pretty good, but, uh, yeah, Horford's matchup as a whole is much better. Agree. Speaking of, let's touch up on the Hawks-Celtics game. Uh, we got Celtics minus three and a total of 200 and a half. Uh, and, yeah, we'll – Start off with some injuries on the Hawks side. We got Kent Bazemore probable with right knee stiffness. I believe it's the third time he's been probable, so we can fully expect him to play. And then Dennis Schroeder is questionable with a sprained left ankle. I think that could have some implications, especially value hunting on this slate, maybe getting into deeper uh, bargain tournament plays. And then on the Celtics side, we got Avery Bradley ruled out with that strained right hamstring, which is obviously a big deal for the Celtics. We got Kelly Olenek. Uh, sore right shoulder, questionable at best. So uh, we can kind of consider him more doubtful in this one and not expect him to suit up. And then we got Marcus Smart, probable with a bruised rib. So this is kind of the game to monitor some of these injuries, um, although most of them are kind of uh, definitive to a point. So uh, let's start off with the Hawks, implied at 98.8. Uh, we kind of talked off camera about this series, really, and just the spreads, come, like Celtics minus three without Avery Bradley. It's just an interesting kind of series. So I think starting off with the Hawks, we just touched up on Al Horford. I like him a lot at the center position in this matchup going against Boston's front court. Uh, we got Jeff Teague who, whose price went up a little bit, but I still like him, especially on this slate. It's just a matter of the position. Who, who are you going to save money at? Where are you getting your value plays? Um, and then, you know, I think Paul Millsap is a great tournament play. I think he's possibly overpriced at this point. People are looking at the past two games where he hasn't performed as high. So I think people generally be off him a little bit where I like getting Millsap at a discounted ownership level. Yeah, I'm with you. I think, um, you know, Schroeder being potentially limited gives Teague some tournament appeal. Um, I, I don't want to be messing too much with the Celtics at home uh, in this spot. I think this is a tough spot for the Hawks overall. Um, so I don't want too heavy exposure beyond tournaments and Horford and cash. I think Baysmore is definitely a uh, tournament only for me. Um, you look at a uh, DK, small forward and for me cash it's Tobias Harris and LeBron James and then on on FanDuel uh you know it's it's LeBron and and, and probably someone like Jay Crowder uh for example I don't think I'm going uh Bazemore on cash even on FanDuel um so 
you know, going, yeah, going down this list, you know, Millsap uh, tournament. Then um, I don't like this spot for Corver. I think people are going to be chasing points. He had a big game last game. Uh, like I said, I don't want to be uh, touching, uh, you know, having too much exposure uh, to the Hawks. Um, you know, the first game of the series at Boston, I don't, I don't really love the spot. So um, I'd probably be off um, Corver altogether and uh, be more looking um, for my shooting guard exposure in that Cleveland uh, Detroit game with uh, JR and KCP instead. Yeah, I think Millsot is a fine option in cash too, but the problem is once you slot LeBron, Love, and Millsap in your lineup, you're going to notice that you need value just as quickly as you can. And uh, it's tough in this slate um, finding those cheaper plays. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I would definitely prioritize Love still at the top of that if only choosing one. Yeah, and I think on this slate, prioritizing your value is kind of where you want to start. I think it's going to be very difficult to squeeze the guys that are kind of obvious players, the guys you think you want to play on both sides. It's going to be really difficult to kind of afford them. So, you know, that's the reason I think people are going to go Corver and just kind of punt that position almost, uh, the, the cheapest price out of KCP and JR. I agree that I like those two more. I think it is a bit points chasey, but I still think he's going to carry – decent ownership in cash just because of the salary relief he offers. Yeah. Most of, I think it's fine on FanDuel at 8,500 where he's a bargain ring of 68%. Um, on DK, I'm not touching Millsap at all at his price. I actually prefer Zach Randolph uh, over uh, Millsap on DK. I, and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the Grizzlies in a little bit, but um, uh, yeah, Millsap, it, I, I don't, I think it's a good tournament spot just because uh, people will be off of him. Um, but like I said, I think Boston will come out, you know, ready to play. And, um, you know, it'll be a, this will be a, a really, um, you know, grind out type game where I don't think you want a ton of exposure overall. All right. Yeah, I agree. And let's move on to the Celtics side where I think a lot of value lies. And some guys we want to play in cash. Um, starting off, I think, like you talked about, Jay Crowder at small forward is, is a very safe play. We got Marcus Smart with Avery Bradley out inserted into the starting lineup. We expect, you know, a, a bit of a minutes and usage bump for him at a cheap price where we're really hurting for value here. So I think he is kind of one of the top value plays. And then uh, as well as Evan Turner kind of on that second unit, um, you know, locking big minutes, kind of handling the ball a, a bunch on uh, off the bench. So those are kind of the guys I'm starting with to look at on this team. Is there anybody else you're kind of considering here? No, I mean, you know, we kind of covered uh, the group, I think, um, if you want to get a little weird, um, you know, and, and, you know, dig deeper, Jonas Jarepko, I think, is worth con- mentioning. Um, I, I don't think they can get away with playing Jared Solinger much in the series at all. Um, Sully played just 14 minutes last game. Jarepko saw 20 off the bench. Um, I kind of expect that kind of a minute split uh, to kind of continue moving forward. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, they just, they just can't survive uh, long stretches of Sully. So if you're looking for some salary relief and, um, you know, find another in places that are less obvious, I think Jarebko is a, is a decent place to, to start. Yeah, and I would stick with Jarebko more at DraftKings where his salary is 2300 Um At Fandle, it's minimum 3500 but even so, I just don't know what kind of upside he offers for that price. Yeah, uh, 2300 is it's pretty – Ridiculous. <laughs> Turn cheap, yeah. Yeah, you, you get a Drebko at a discount, and I hope he has a pretty solid game, and I think that is worth a lot on this slate where you can kind of afford a lot of these other guys. I think the only two other guys I'm looking at some very limited term exposure, more for contrarian purposes than the fact that I actually like them, is one, Isaiah Thomas, I think will carry a pretty low ownership on this slate, and then uh, we've seen Amir Johnson. It's tough with him because I don't trust the ceiling because of the minutes. Uh, so I guess he kind of makes for more of a cash play, but we kind of have other options. Yeah. I like more than that price range for him. So he's kind of out, but I think Isaiah Thomas offers some value as a tournament play on the slate. Yeah. I think, um, what do we think? Who's going to be more, more highly on uh, Isaiah or Jeff Teague? Uh, I think it would depend a, a bit on Schroeder. I think Teague would be he- heavier owned if Schroeder's out. Um, but otherwise, I think they're going to be pretty similar. I think Kyrie will be uh, – I think Kyrie and Reggie will be a bit higher on maybe. Reggie for sure. I would yeah, I, 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 I didn't mention any of those guys because I, I know for sure they'll be higher. Yeah. They'll yeah. be 
I'm talking basically like number three, just number these four. Two, yeah, okay. yeah I, I think it'll probably be Teague just because um, people are going to be looking at uh, you know, news. averages. Well, yeah. Uh, 38.1, I think, uh, for Teague over the first two and 35 and a half for Isaiah over the first two. And you got the, the maybe the upside with, uh, with Schroeder and, yeah. and, and Teague. So, um, yeah, I do agree on that, ba- on that basis where Isaiah will be you, I'd probably the most overlooked or the most under-owned out of the four main point guards of the slate. Um, and given, yeah, I mean, I like this spot generally for Boston. So, I don't mind getting a piece of Isaiah in tournaments at all uh, because, you know, I do expect them to come out and play well. And um, Isaiah can have a huge, you know, 30 plus uh, point night or something. If, uh, you know, if the offense is, if the offense is going and then then they happen to score more than seven points in the first quarter. (laughs) That's a big if, right? Uh, but yeah, at home, I like him too. Yeah. So I, I I agree. I I think Isaiah is a very strong tournament play. And, you know, we kind of got our, our cash options on this team too. Um, Let's let's move on to the last game, the one I'm least excited about, especially compared to these first two, where the spreads uh, aren't you know double digits. So we'll get into the Spurs at Grizzlies. Spurs, uh, the line just moved to twelve. Uh, they're favored by twelve, and the total is a whopping one eighty-two and a half, uh, which I believe is the lowest of mm-hmm. this playoffs so far, uh, <laughs> and probably the season. Uh, so yeah, Spurs implied at ninety-seven point three which typically, you know, I think we're fine with on a three-game slate getting some value. But the problem, the Spurs are just blowing them out to where no one's playing minutes. They're resting, basically. They're, they're taking these days off. They're uh, getting ready for the next round, more difficult matchups. I could see in a way, especially on a three-game slate, kind of um, going contrarian and thinking of this game as it'll be under 10-point spread, under double digits. So some of these Spurs stars might have to play more. So for me, I uh, all Spurs guys are off for cash and I'm um, just looking at tournaments, tournament value for them um, between kind of Kawhi Aldridge and then some Tim Duncan, I think some tournament exposure to him as well. Yeah, this sounds really dumb given the total, but I like this game a lot for tournaments. Um, just because, just because the ownership for, for one, I, this, I mean, these two teams have been absolute garbage for DFS purposes. I think, uh, the Grizzlies only have like one guy, a Debo, averaging over uh, 18 uh, DK points per game uh, so far in the series. Um, and, you know, Pop said that he's worried that um, his guys will lose focus in this one. And uh, because, you know, they're going, they're playing a Grizzlies team, they've blown out the first two games and they're going to the grindhouse now. And he's worried about them, you know, being a little complacent. The line is, you know, it started at 11 and moved to 12. Um, you know, so it's moving towards the Spurs direction, but still, I think, um, that seems really low, uh, you know, given the way the series has gone. And I think, you know, given, uh, the Grizzlies are playing the grindhouse, it could be a little closer than we think. And, um, that might necessitate, you know, Aldridge and Kawhi, uh, playing, um, 30 to 32 minutes possibly, um, and Duncan playing 28. So, um, I, I, I like those three quite a bit in tournaments. Um, the total still high enough at, what is it, 97.3 um, to where it's not a complete disaster and there should be enough uh, that, uh, there for them to eat. So, um, yeah, those three are the ones I'm looking at in, in tournaments from the Spurs. Yeah, I think I pivot to Duncan the most in tournaments, if only because like he's the cheapest option that offers actual upside at his position. Um, and he's only 5,300 on FanDuel. So considering the drop-off between him and then uh, Horford and Drummond, the other two spots you're looking at, then, yeah, I think Duncan is the, the most valuable option, arguably, especially in tournaments. Yeah, on this three-game slate, I think a lot of people will write off this game in tournaments. And then if they don't, they'll try to get fancy and maybe stack it or something, which I think is not great because it's very low percentage. This game is really high scoring and fast-paced. Yeah. I like – uh, maybe stacking some of these other games, but making sure you get a piece of this game. So, you know, stack some of these more chalky players, but then throw Kawhi in there or throw Aldridge in there. And I think just picking pieces of this game in, in combination of these other lineups is probably the way to go in terms of being contrarian but not stupid. The problem for Memphis is that 
I mean, they're getting blown out, but they're getting blown out in the worst way. They're like being slowly strangled just at this grueling pace. Um, and then they just get a fire, a terrible shot off to the point where they're even playing Lance Stevens in only nine minutes. Like they're, they're just trying to make stuff happen and it's not, and their salaries offer value actually like, uh, Xavier Munford, who's minimum, um, and, uh, other players like that. But I mean, like their actual upside, even at minimum, I don't know. Munford's getting 27 minutes a night, but even at minimum, it's just what maximum value 21 points on a given night. Like I don't, I don't know. It's just terrible. Yeah, I mean the problem has always been just the minutes for these guys, and they're not. It's not getting you know, it's not. It's terrible in that you know they're playing at a slow pace against the Spurs, a tough defense. Their points per possession is obviously very low. And the thing is that they're not even playing their, you know, their big guys. We can't even count on anybody for like 34 minutes. I don't even know if I can say one guy on that team will play 34 minutes tonight. I have no idea. I mean, Debo is probably the best um, bet at that or maybe even close. But he, throughout even the regular season, has hovered around that 30-minute mark um, regardless of game script and game flow. So um, I mentioned Debo before at 6,200 on uh, DK. I like him quite a bit there. Um, I think this, this game will be close enough to where he'll play uh, 30, 30, 30 to 32 minutes. He's played 29. He's averaged 29 minutes per game over the first two in horrific blowouts. So um, I, I like him in this spot. Um, yeah, beyond that, you know, Munford I'm good with. Um, and You're yeah. so bad. Oh. They're, they're so bad. Well, they're just so, I mean, outmatched here. It's just... yeah such a big difference between teams when, when the Spurs are healthy and they're second, you know, they're, they're not backing down. They're playing defense the whole, the entire game. I mean, I don't mind some dart throw um, tournament exposure at all to Matt Barnes. Um, he did play fuller minutes after just not playing much in that first game. So I think if he plays, you know, that the 30 minutes um, around 30 minutes, I think he can um, deliver some value there. Uh, and, and be min- and very you know minuscule. You own forty six hundred on DK. Um, it's it's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, these guys will have low percentages owned. So I think you look at Zebo uh, as the guy we like the most on DK sixty two hundred, especially um, some Munford. Although yeah, Barnes on DK compared to Fanduel is really cheap too. So you kind of stack and. You know, it's an easy way to get contrarian, just kind of getting pieces. They are at the grindhouse. So, yeah, the, yeah, well, it's not likely this game is close. You have to kind of take that chance on a three-game slate. Um, you know, there is variance still. So kind of picking some of these guys in the chance that this is a close game. They log heavy minutes. Uh, you know, it's a must-win game for them. So if it is close, these guys are going big minutes more than likely. So I think there's value uh, at, at heavily discounted ownerships. Um, on this team and then the Spurs too, which we kind of talked about. So uh, all in all, it, it is an ugly game. And I think for cash, you can just uh, pretty much fade it. Yeah. Zebo, Zebo and DK, I'm actually okay with in cash. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I don't, I don't like anybody from this slate really. Agree. Not even looking forward to watching it. Oh, we'll watch it, John. We're going to have some jelly beans on it. Oh, I could, I mean, I could watch it. That's not an issue. I just said, I'm not looking forward to it. Okay. Well, I, I am because of the jelly beans. I don't like jelly beans. All right, man. I know you backed out uh, last night on some jelly bean wagers. No, um, you. No, we, we, we went candy shopping, and I'm talking about real jelly beans, actually. I'm and, talking uh, about paper. Well, I care more about actual jelly beans at this point of the conversation. Right. And you tried to convince me to uh, buy NOS energy drink, which everyone knows is the worst energy drink on the market. Just awful. It's not, it works. How do you think I stay up until 5 a.m. every night and wake up at 6? Not NOS. <laughs> it's in my blood. It's in my bloodline. All right, I don't, want to, I don't want to turn this into another candy pod. I already did that one with Pete. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> done that. Let's keep things uh, you know, pro for these NBA pods. That carry a high value. Justin, you got any last thoughts on this slate? <laughs> um, not really. I, this, is, this, is not a, uh, this is not a great slate. I think it's It'll be a fun slate to just get a little creative and we'll get a little weird because I think it's it's pretty straightforward in terms of everybody's going to be off that late game and mm-hmm. um, you know everybody's going to be on Cleveland Detroit so um, I, I you know I, I, I might throw some uh, some really interesting and 
and nonsensical lineups uh, just to just to see if this uh, this Spurs Grizzlies game just kind of like surprises us and tr- and turns into semi a semi watchable. Um, <laughs> decently scoring game i don't know maybe yeah i think it could pay off i think there's some big dividends possibly there getting those guys at such discounted ownerships pairing them with some other kind of chalky plays so if they hit and you get these value guys hitting that nobody has then that's kind of what you need to take some of these tournaments down otherwise it's going to be like 100 people splitting uh, first place which is possible on this on this slate all right well that covers the pod we'll Definitely do another pod for you guys tomorrow. We have, a, I think, a pretty juicy slate. It's a four-gamer. Yeah. Um, good mm-hmm. action. So I think tomorrow's well, the – A four-gamer without Spurs Grizzlies is yep. the yeah, nuts. That's like prime. That's like a nice nine-game Wednesday night. Uh, yep. Three quarters of the way through the season, what we're all just fiending for. So uh, we'll, we'll get you guys a pod tomorrow. Until then, good luck on this slate tonight. Good luck, guys.